Hi, and welcome back to Programming with PAX. In today's video, we're going to talk about some of the most frequent mistakes that people make while learning web development. I believe that if you are aware of some of the common pitfalls, then you'll be able to navigate them much better throughout your web development career, and you'll have a much higher chance of success. Let's get started. The first common mistake is not setting a timeline or having a roadmap. Without a schedule to follow, you might begin to start feeling a little less motivated and committed to learning web development, and time will just sort of pass by. However, if you do have uh, a roadmap and you are tracking your time, you'll be much better equipped at tracking your milestones that you set for yourself, like finishing a course or a project, or starting to apply for a job. If you're looking for a front-end web developer roadmap, I just finished one and it teaches you exactly what you need to learn and it gives you a bunch of resources. I'll link it right here. Another common mistake, and I'm guilty of this, is trying too many programming languages right at the start. So I would go from JavaScript to PHP and then a little bit of Python because why not? You need to be learning the stack for the type of job you're trying to get. So if you're trying to go for a front-end position, you need to be learning the front-end stack and you need to stick with it. I've said this before, but you don't want to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. You really want vertical proficiency, not horizontal. And you get that by practicing that one thing every day. It's that simple. Next, consistency. Whenever you're trying to learn something, consistency is key. If you've ever tried to learn another language like French or Spanish, you'll know how important it is to be immersed. When you're immersed, you become this sponge and you can just absorb everything that's thrown at you. And if you aren't immersed, then you're gonna have a much more difficult time. When learning programming, consistency is the first step to being immersed. Another big one, and pretty much every perfectionist is guilty of this, is waiting until you're ready to start applying for jobs. You will never be ready. There is never gonna be a time where you wake up and you say, absolutely, I'm 100% ready, let's go. You really just need to take the leap. Uh, my best advice is to follow your roadmap. So hammer out the fundamentals and have a really strong foundational knowledge in the programming language that you're going for. Build a bunch of projects that demonstrate your skills. Um, a portfolio would be next. So something that brings it all together and shows it beautifully. And then after that, polish off your resume and just start applying. Just, just go for it. Uh, the more that you apply, the more comfortable you're going to start to get with the entire process. So you'll, you'll feel more comfortable handing in your resume. And similarly, the more you hand in your resume, the more interview processes you're going to go through. So you'll, you'll start to feel more comfortable with that as well. You'll learn what type of questions they're asking and what they're looking for. Uh, this is what you have to do. Just, just take the leap and start applying. Past that, I would say another one is not taking the time to learn how to learn. It sounds kind of funny to say, but there are a bunch of different ways that you can learn web development. So through video tutorials, through documentation, through reading other people's code or books, like there's a bunch of different ways and everyone learns differently. So take that extra time just to kind of explore different ways of learning whatever programming language you, you're going for, and, uh, and it'll really help you in the long run, for sure. Next, prioritizing quality over quantity. I believe that when you're first starting off, you need to be writing as much code as you can and just getting it to work. Just, just focus on getting it to work. If you are spending all your time just trying to write as elegant and efficient as code as possible right at the start, it might be really demotivating. Uh, 
Um, and so the best, the best way to around that is writing as much code as you can and get your hands dirty with dirty code. Another really big one that everyone, everyone uh, falls into this trap is tutorial hell. Tutorial hell is where you have spent all your time watching tutorials, but you've never actually built anything after that. So you understand the content while you're watching the video, the tutorial, but when it comes time to actually applying it and building something yourself, you, you draw a blank, you completely freeze, you don't know what's going on. So the best advice that I can give for this is when you watch a tutorial, to immediately afterwards start building a, a similar project. So let's say you watch a tutorial on, uh, on a weather app. Right afterwards, you should be building the UI totally different. It shouldn't look, it shouldn't look like the tutorial's UI. And you should find a totally different API or data provider, the place where you're getting the, the temperatures and the weather conditions, totally different, and use the tutorial the, the, the parts of the tutorial that tell you how to integrate the API and maybe to display the information, use those core parts, but make it your own. And when you make it your own, you're going to really learn it for, sh for sure. It'll be very helpful. Another one that I'm guilty of is trying to memorize code syntax. Code syntax is the grammar of code. So should there be a semicolon at the end, or should there be more indents and in this line, whatever it is. Uh, it's funny to look back on now, but I used to hand write out uh, a lot of HTML just on paper, um, and that turned into a total mess and it did not help me at all. So don't do that. Um, what I would recommend is for anything like semicolons or uh, indents, whatever it is, uh, I think you should download the prettier extension for your code editor. Um, it will automatically, when you save, it'll just add those things. Uh, and it follows uh, industry standards or best practices. So that'll cover the light stuff, the syntax, and for everything else, it really just comes down to practice. You, you need to be practicing and it'll just, it'll just come to you. Another big issue to be aware of, and it's a big issue, is trying to learn a framework such as Angular or Vue or React before you've fully mastered JavaScript. I think this problem comes from when we read job postings, they all say that you need to have knowledge of these frameworks and so we think okay well I need to get there as fast as possible and in turn you're gonna skip over some of the more advanced features of JavaScript. One of the issues of this is that when you're learning this framework you're not gonna be able to tell what's JavaScript and what's the framework. You won't really know what's what. And another big issue with this is that Inevitably, when the framework becomes outdated or gets replaced, and they all do, uh, you're going to be stuck in a bit of a limbo where you've mastered the framework, but you don't have that core foundational knowledge of JavaScript, and you're not going to be able to adapt to the constantly changing industry. So the solution to this is to take the time to really make sure that you, you hammer out the fundamentals of JavaScript and you, you learn the nitty gritty details, uh, the advanced features. The final mistake, giving up. You will inevitably run into roadblocks and when you do, you need to power through them. I would suggest that when you run into a really tough problem, you set a 30 minute timer and in that time, you, you do everything you can to, to, to learn this topic. So review your notes, look on online resources like Stack Overflow, do everything you can to figure out the problem that you're running into. At the end of this time, if you still can't figure it out, take a break. Just, just take a break completely. Sometimes you'll need to take 
a break in order to actually understand these complex topics. There's been a ton of times where I've been at work and I leave work and I don't know what I just looked at. It is like my head, it makes no sense. And then the next day when I return to work, all of a sudden things are just clicking uh, at least a bit more. And in time, you'll get it all. All right, so in summary, make sure you have a roadmap and set a timeline. Don't try too many programming languages right at the start. You'll want to stay focused on the type of job you're after and technologies required. When learning anything, consistency is key. So try to code every day. Don't wait until you feel ready to apply for jobs. You'll never feel 100% ready. Take a bit of time to figure out the best way you learn things. When you're first starting out, prioritize quantity over quality. Quality will naturally come with experience. Don't memorize code syntax, just practice. Learn JavaScript really well, and then move on to a framework. And finally, don't give up. With some hard work, you can learn everything required to become a web developer. You've got this. Let me know in the comments down below what some of the biggest challenges and mistakes that you've faced while learning web development. If you found this video helpful, consider dropping a like. It really helps the channel out. And subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.